How's it going, everybody? Welcome back, or welcome to the channel. This is the spoiler-heavy review of Lord of the Rings Episode 1 and 2, the new Amazon Prime show. If you're brand new to the show, brand new to my show, do me a favor and subscribe. Are you coming in here just to scream and yell and say how much you hate anybody who has anything either negative or positive to say about this show. Just The price of admission is just you got to subscribe. And then you can yell and scream and, I don't know, take a dump in the middle of the floor. I don't care, but you get, the price of admission is you got to subscribe. And you can scream your ass off. How about that? That's the deal. Anyway, that being said, um, so Lord of the Rings, this is the spoiler for one and two, dropped on Amazon Prime. Very smart move to drop both of them. We'll get into that in a second. But I didn't know how I was going to react to the show. I'm a fantasy fan, right? I like Lord of the Rings, the movies, very much so. Hobbit, eh. But the original movies, extended cut, it's the way to go. Didn't read the books. Um, I obviously am a Tolkien fan from and, and and respect the legacy that he left behind, obviously, but I'm not like a diehard Tolkien kind of book reader fan. And that being said, I was watching the first episode and I was like, if I was a massive Tolkien fan, I'd have a lot of questions because I have a lot of questions and I'm sure they have even more questions and probably not loving what they're, what they're seeing. And that being said, going into this, the, in general, this show is, is about Galadriel, who was Kate Blanchett's character in um, the, the original trilogy. And I think the actress playing her is doing a phenomenal job. And I can see the eventuality of, of who she becomes in the movie, even though it's like 3,000 years before or whatever. But I did have questions, right? And I said, okay, what happens here is that she, we find out it's a time of peace when we start out. And her brother winds up going to war with orcs and the eventuality of, of who Sauron becomes and, and Sauron brands him and kills him. And so she's, she's on, she's, she's ready for revenge and that's kind of how it's set up. And she's a badass warrior and she goes on this mission and she's going out, she brings, she brings her peeps and she's like, now they still exist. And they've been looking for thousands of years for Sauron. And they're like, no, 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 he's, he's gone. And you, you, she just kills this troll easily. And they're like, nah, we're not following you. Why wouldn't you follow her? She just killed the troll by herself. That I didn't understand, but that's not the question I had overall. The question was, she's a badass warrior, and I know. Some people already left me in my immediate reaction last night that she was part of the guard and all this, those types of things, so it's, it's consistent, I guess, to what it is. But my question was, even though it's 3,000 years later, she doesn't want anything to do and doesn't even mention anything about Sauron, really. I mean, she mentions him, obviously, through that, that everything. She helps when they go to see her in the movie, but you'd figured she'd give a lot more insight on all the stuff she'd be down. She kind of knew about him and everything that she did on the way to find him and the warrior that she was. And I don't know, maybe you can come on the fellowship, will you come with us? We could need you. You took out a troll by yourself. You did all this stuff. But for me, I, again, I can understand Tolkien fans in general being upset about it. I said, this is a, this is a fantasy show and that's it. But Watching the show, and, and it did feel, what I will say is the production value on this show is incredible. And it should be for the amount of money. It's like $50 million an episode. And it should be, and it is. I was worried in the first couple of trailers that it was going to look very CW-ish or very television-ish. It doesn't. It looks, and I, and I don't know, even people who are, like I said, if you're coming in here to take a dump and call people names and call you whatever it is, and you're about to do that, um, go ahead. Like I said, you got to subscribe. That's the, that's the goal. But, um, but even if you hate it and you're about to say, oh, yeah, you're a show for liking it and all that, that's fine. You can do whatever, whatever you want to do. You have a blast. But what I'm asking you is, inside of that, even if you're screaming at me, you, you know, you freaking show, you like everything, blah, 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 blah. But I thought, the, the, uh, I thought that the, it looked pretty good. Can you, just let me know. Even if you think it looked like crap, tell me why. So if you're going to scream and yell when you come in here, it, 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 scream and yell, but leave some kind of, that's the goal. If you're coming in here to just yell and, and you leave a comment, do that because that's what you're here to do. I understand. But I want you to tell me, do you think it looks good? Because come on, it looked great. I think that the way that they made it look was great. And that also being said, I understand it's a pilot. I understand that it's the first one and they have to set it everything up. But I think there's, and, and I'm not going to do the thing that a lot of people are doing is comparing it to House of the Dragon all the time. But the only thing I will say is that there's a lot of setup in House of the Dragon, but it made it more interesting i was a little bored watching the first episode of this show but they set they set up galadriel 
right? And then the whole relationship with her and Elrond. And you know what's funny, though, is, and this is played by Hugo Weaving's character, obviously, um, in the original trilogy, and watching his kind of rise to fame. And I think the character is consistent, in two, but it's funny because the guy who is the actual king that winds up crowning, oh, we'll get to her in a second, um, Galadriel here, he had more of what Elrond is in the original trilogy, that kind of vibe, right? And I think maybe that's just because, because you're king and maybe after years and thousands of years, it, you just kind of get that demeanor. But um, I felt that. But I think the actor playing Elrond is great and his story is great and it gets even better in, in the second one. But it's set up, you know, she, she's, she's reluctant. She doesn't want to go back to her, to the elf world she, or, or land and she wants, to, she wants to stick around because she, she's convinced Sauron's not done. And then you go back and forth, and there's the Harfoots, and it's like the first wave of the, the hobbits, right? People are pissed off, I guess, because the hobbits run around at this point. I don't give a shit. What do I care? Is that why the hobbits are in this one? Okay. Again, you're talking faintly. That's not consistent, man. I get it. To me, freaking Harfoots. They're running around with hairy feet. How do I care? And I think this girl's pretty good. She's good, and she's... And again, but... She pops in, in episode two is really when you, know, you get the mischievous side of her and you know she's going to have something bigger to do. And it's probably whether it's Gandalf or, or Saruman, um, whoever that might be, she finds him, right? And that's cool. But we're setting up the, the, the Harfoots are, are like our new hobbits. So as we're dr going through this whole journey, it's, it is. It's a lot of setup, right? So here's who this person is, here's who this person, and that's what you normally do. I just don't know what, what it was, but a couple different times that I was watching on TV, I'm like, oh, man. This is, I looked, and I'm, I'm like, we're only 30 minutes into this? It feels long. Holy crap. And I never, I never really get like that, because in the second episode, it flew. Second episode flew. And, and it's probably, to be honest, it's, it's because they were set up in that first episode, but like, I think you really got to get through that first episode and go, okay, <sighs> Give me, and I know that I'm. I might be. I don't think I'm alone. I think some people felt that that way. But I know there are a lot of people I saw in the immediate reaction that said, "I liked all the setup. I liked it. I liked setting us back up in that world, and that's great." Um, I just felt that it was. I, I it wasn't as. And and it's not. I didn't need. And that's the other. What do you just need a bunch of action sword fights? No, not at all. As I mentioned with, uh, if you've seen House of the Dragon episode two, not a lot of action. Not at all. A lot of great character setup. A lot of good dialogue. And that's what I think that, again, probably relating to the Tolkien side of it, it's missing that extra kind of juice that Tolkien's dialogue and things had, right? It feels like a, it feels like a good fantasy thing that somebody just made up. And it doesn't have, it's, it's like a, I don't want to say standard I don't know. I'm trying to think about it, like how it was just, um, it just seemed like something, it didn't, it didn't have that token magic, right? Episode two, though, did feel more like, I, it felt more like the Middle Earth, and that's probably because of all the stuff with Elrond and, and the dwarves, the way that was set up, the way that that looked. I thought that stuff was great, and I thought Galadriel in that second episode had a lot to do, where she's on the boat, and whether it's Saruman or whoever the hell it is, um, shows up. We did that already. But this dude, man, this whole thing, this is, this is where I really started to get into the show because this is where I felt like, okay, I'm back here and I love, and this is where the setup between the character really worked for me because of the relationship between the dwarf um, prince, I guess, and, um, and Elrond and their relationship that they had. And I love the scene in the, 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 not the elevator, but whatever the hell it is. And, and they're talking and he says, what, what did I do to piss you off, my friend? He's like, look, to you, 20 years is like a blink of the eye. But to me, that's a lifetime, man. It's half, it's a, and you missed the birth of my kids. You missed my wedding. You missed everything. And Elrond goes, yeah, I did. I'm sorry. Congratulations. And what can I do? He's like, fine, you can come apologize to my wife. And his wife's like, yeah, sit down, have a, have a meal. And they, and they get past their differences because Elrond needs the dwarves and asking the dwarves, suggested the dwarves to help build the tower that we know. And that was a great setup to me. So like that storyline, there's the, the other certain, there are a couple storylines, our boy from, um, from Game of Thrones. That's not it. Um, where is he? No, we did that one already. 
Where, where is everything? I'm losing everything. I'm sorry. Now, this was, this is the boat scene. Now, this, this I thought was great, too, because, like, you see, like, this non-trust with the elves because of, you know, it seems like they have, like, their own agenda, and, and you see this is before they kind of form up the first time to fight Sauron, Sauron, excuse me, and, um, and she's on her own, and she kind of forms this bond with the, with the, with the dude. And how he rescues her at the end. She's, this is before he rescues her, but she rescues him. Just go to the bottom of the ocean. They, and they're forming this relationship. I like that. So here he is. This is our guy from uh, Game, of the, Game of Thrones. And now we're finding that the orcs are coming back. And it, you know, like there's pockets of people who are now starting to find out that this, the, uh, the orcs and the Sauron, all of it is real. And so maybe the elves aren't talking, or at least Gladriel isn't talking shit. So it's these pockets that are forming and the disgusting thing with the cow and all, all that happened. It's gross, but it worked. Like I said, the second episode worked for me. I, was, I, I felt like I was on Middle Earth. The first one felt like a, a, like a, a, a really high-produced fantasy thing. They say, hey, you remember Elves? You remember this? Remember that? This is kind of like Hobbits. You like this? Um, yeah, that character is kind of like similar to what was in uh, Lord of the Rings. And then... Uh, I'm going to set all this up. There's a couple of Easter eggs here. And you're like, okay. In the second episode, I felt like, okay, I, feel like, I actually feel like I'm in Middle Earth. Um, and I thought that the, the, the sound effects were really good with, well, again, whether it's Saruman or, or Gandalf or whoever the hell it is with the, maybe it's not, maybe it's neither one of them, but he's, he's doing the old, uh, <laughs> she's like, take it easy, you drunk ass. I just helped you. Screaming at my friends, yelling at everybody, shut up. Put some pants on, God's sakes. And um and he does. And that's that's kind of so there's these separate that's why the adventure to me was more memorable in episode two. I can if I think about one and two, for me, it's for if I go back to one, I think, okay, there's the boat scene with Galadriel and she's trying to she has that relationship with her brother and she goes out and she, she's just obsessed with fi- finding Sauron and nobody wants to help her and Elrond is her buddy and, and then it, it, that's it. It's kind of, that's, that's what, I, I could probably dive into it deeper, but that's what I think of right away. But then when I think of the second episode, well, that's because you just watched the second episode. I watched them both back to back. I'm telling you the one that I liked better, better was the second one because the dwarves and the stuff of the dwarves and the, the, the backstory on the history between him and Elrond, the fact that Elrond's got to go and, and help out uh, to try to build that thing, and he knows he's he's going to use he, not use, but he's going to help. He's going to um, use that relationship that he's got with the dwarves to help build that tower. Galadriel on her own, trying to find out she doesn't trust anybody, and she's got to trust in this in this dude. The the Harfoots doing what they, what they got to do, and and giving us that kind of um, Hobbit relationship, that thing that we that we liked in the Lord of the Rings trilogy with the the big heart trying to help out, whether that's a, a good or a bad thing, we'll, we'll, we'll find out soon. And, um, the Game of Thrones guy running around saying, uh, being the one who's, who's helping out, again, humans with the, with the orcs and the, the kid with the, you know, what, what is that? The, that stupid saber, whatever the hell it is. Again, like I said, this is not the channel to come to if you want all the terminology. Absolutely not. I'll have Rachel Cushing on this show, and she'll tell you, but if you want that, Hell yeah, come in here and talk some shit because it's going to be every week. So anyway, I'm going to keep, keep watching for sure because I like because two got me. One, I, I, one I, I'm going to be honest. One, I was contemplating after watching the first one saying, okay, look, maybe I'm just going to do my review and say, hey, there's going to be tons of other channels that cover this thing. Maybe this isn't for me. But I stuck it out and I liked episode two. What did you think overall? Um, again, I know you're here. Some, I know you. I'm looking at you. You're here to talk some shit. You can talk some shit. You better hit that subscribe button, you rat. And, and you also tell me if you like the, the, the way that it looked. Go ahead and call your names. Do what you got to do. You're here to hate. I get you. I know that's what you did. You wake up in the morning. You're looking for those channels just to say, call some names. Do it. Do your thing. But subscribe, you motherfucker. Talking to you. Yeah, you. The rest of you. Who liked it and enjoyed it? What'd you like about it? What was your favorite parts? Who your favorite characters? I want to know. Let me know. Tell me, tell me, tell me. And once again, there it is. Subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll be back week to week doing these things. I'll do my immediate reaction, and then I'll do the spoiler review. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I appreciate you, and we'll see you on the flip side. Peace.